welcome to Car Perver. I'm Johnny Smith. In this episode, I'm going to be explaining how I feel about this car, the new 2020 Kia Soul EV. My first 2,000 miles in the car. I haven't done as many miles as I'd like to, but there's been a global pandemic, so I've been told to stay at home. This first episode explaining how I feel about living with the Kia Soul EV and how our family like it. It's, it's really just sort of early impressions. I got this car about a fortnight before coronavirus uh, lockdown. So I haven't actually done that many long journeys in it. I've done lots of short journeys. So this is my first taste of freedom post lockdown. And I'm going to a friend's place, uh, which is very interesting because he's not only got the outgoing model of this car, he also runs a vintage wedding car business um, and has been assembling expertly my long suffering project that is the 1964 Chevrolet Impala. So that will be in a different episode, but I'm driving to Essex and back, and I'm gonna do it without charging. It should cover that mileage quite easily. Since lockdown, this car has won World Urban Car of the Year in the, in the World Car Awards. And I knew, I had a hunch that it would be a highly acclaimed car because I think Kia have done a, a spectacular job of it. I actually drove a 2020 Soul uh, for fifth gear in prototype form when we were testing it in Death Valley. But I was only allowed to drive the piston car, which we don't get in Europe. I road test the car when it was launched. I saw the car when it was first unveiled at the Los Angeles Motor Show. So I've actually, I've enjoyed the journey with this car in terms of its conception. So in these early stages of living with the soul, what do I feel? I do feel it's got soul. I feel that almost everybody I've met that has bought one or leased one, uh, a previous one, really likes it. I feel that it is a car that I personally prefer to the sister car, the Hyundai Kona. I prefer it to the Kia e Nero, its bigger, more sensible brother or sister. Um, despite the fact that the e nero has got a much bigger boot and it's got more practical space back there, I just think this is a, it's a more interesting car to look at, it's a more interesting car to drive, it's got a bit of funk about it, which the e nero most certainly doesn't. And though the Kona tries, I think the Kona's not going to be remembered as a piece of design like this will. And I think it drives a little bit nicer than the Kona. I think this really fits the bill for me. Got my driving modes down here. I'm gonna slot it into normal. I tend not to use eco mode unless I know I'm running out of power, really. First of all, I've never done 280 miles on one charge, which is what this car claims to be able to do. Because I've found that Kia and Hyundai, when it comes to EVs, have got the efficiency of their vehicles really nailed. Even if, in the instance of this car, not actually the most aerodynamic shape at all. In fact, it looks like a Victorian hat. It's got a load of room for a Victorian hat as well, but it tends to have a really efficient drivetrain. And you can tell how efficient you've been. If you go into eco driving, I think it is, yeah, here. Fuel economy history. I love the fact they use fuel economy. And you've got a diary. A lot of them are short in recent time because of coronavirus. But this miles per kilowatt hour, and miles per kilowatt hour are the equivalent of your miles per gallon in a piston car. I've been getting 4.2, 4.6, 4.2, 7, 4.5, 5.1, 4.7. I mean, anything over four is really good, typically, for an EV. And on a long journey uh, at high speed, I would say anything over, anything over three and a half is excellent. I'm driving to Essex and it's just over 100 miles each way. I think it was 105 miles each way. I don't always get on with adaptive cruise control but a lot of cars have them now and this definitely has it. 70s not particularly uh, efficient for an EV in my experience. Let's just try it. Soul. Our soul as it were. I like our soul. <laughs> I can't go. <laughs> I, it probably just can't stop saying it every time. I never say it. Don't you? No. 
never. Oh, I always do. Okay. Yeah. Therein lies the rub. So we've had the sole for not that long, actually. During 10 or 11 weeks, we charged it twice. Yeah. It, the, the range on it is brilliant yeah. in you, comparison to the Golf. You don't even think about it. Yeah. Now that lockdown's easing, we can do some longer journeys and then give that verdict. Yeah. Is that we'll, we'll, we'll be able to drive this to my parents' house. Oh, I was just about to say it. That's what we need to do. In one hit, and we'll have about Not 30... one hit. We can do it in one hit. And stopping and charging to get down to Somerset. Yeah. We we have to and wrap then, a charge normally. I we mean, can... at that time, we drove pulled into Gloucester oh, Services, gosh. which was like four miles to spare. Oh, the shutting car. Shutting everything down. It was the logo on the dash that I've never seen before. The tortoise logo was basically, the car is about to stop. It yeah. will stop. Yeah. It, it's just going to stop. One thing that really excites me, and I haven't even done any public rapid charging, and that's something I'll do in, a, in, in forthcoming episodes with this car updates, is the fact that you just get in it and you know you've got such a massive battery pack, 64 kilowatt hours of, of, of energy ready to rock and roll that sits down there on this flat floor. And I, I'll show you what it looks like underneath. I went under it in my inspection pit, because I'm dedicated. Okay, so I'm going to go underneath my sole. So that is the lowest part of the car. It means it's a completely flat floor car. Look, the different suspension system. Can you see here, look? Just thought you guys might want that extra bit of detail, you know, the things I do for you. Now you can only buy it in electric in the UK. You can buy it as a piston car in other territories. So it's always been an adaptation of a piston car. It's made on a production line alongside piston cars. It's not a ground up EV like the i3, for example, or the Leaf. Inside feels a little bit more mature and the outside is a little bit more aggressive. So I guess if it's trying to reach a bit more of a, not a younger market, but maybe a slightly more serious. I think the Soul's got a little bit more serious. What do you think of the design? Because I know you're you like aesthetics? I do. Shapes. Shapes, yeah. Shapes. Um, it was better looking than I thought it was going to be. When mm. you showed me the picture, I was a bit... Uh, you're a bit non. I was a bit non about it. Yeah. Um, and when it turned up, um, it definitely looked better than I thought it was going to look. Yeah, I think you were impressed with it. Um, and bigger. It was bigger than I thought it was going to be. Yeah. So that was good, from obviously from a family point of view. I mean, it is a perfect family car, really, in that respect, isn't yeah. it? Well, I like the look of it. You and I both know we like cars that are a bit out of the ordinary. It is a really divisive car. Some people go, I love the front, the back's just off its face. I don't want a car that looks like a Lego brick. I quite like this colour, but I think it's a real shame that they didn't well, bring the Well, this is the, the best colour it came in, isn't it? So that's why. Yeah, they won't sell you the yellow one in the UK. I mean, I would never buy a yellow car. You I got mean... yellow earrings on. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think they look yellow awesome car. in yellow. I, mean, I say that obviously I've got a mint green car as well, but yeah. I don't like. I mean, I don't like gimmicky cars. I like interesting, quirky cars. I don't do gimmicky, other than the fact that I'm wearing Lego. You're earrings. not wearing Lego earrings, chops. But that's for me. The EV world needs to up its game a bit in the design stakes. I mean, what Tesla are doing is just ridiculous. Ridiculous, heard, as in crazy, or no, just rubbish. It's just awful. I mean, yeah. like they've got all that tech, yeah. and they've you know. Bloody Musk has now sent a rocket into space and he can't get a car to design to actually look cool and interesting. Well, I, I'm I'm not big on the Model 3. It's got that uh, frog face. Wash time. Snow foam. It's not working properly. Cake bake. Why does it always rain when I clean my car? Every time. Tesla aside, the Koreans are the ones to just beat at the moment. If the Germans don't beat the Koreans in terms of EV tech, then this uh, EV race for affordable um, battery packs and decent performance and longevity is down to Tesla and and Ikea and nobody else it seems when we started this morning 
uh, and I unplugged it, I'd preheated the car and it said it had about 255 miles. And I found the Kia to be really honest. Kias and Hyundais tend to be really honest about their range. So although on paper this car can do 280 on one charge, obviously that depends on the conditions and all of those things. I've never seen it say 280 yet. Uh, when I've fully charged it. It's always, most it said is 268, I think. But it tends to be true to its word. So it says 255, I bet I will get 255, unless I drive it really badly, uh, or I cane the heating. Talking of heating, Kia and Hyundai have always had the heat pump. The heat pump is fantastic. Those of you who don't know what the heat pump is, it's a system which uses ambient temperature to transfer into the cabin. Uh, and it's just a much more efficient way of heating the car. And in this instance, you can also, and this is another Kia Hyundai masterstroke, you can press driver only. So it uses the cooling, the aircon, or the heating, and just focuses on the driver if it's just one person driving like me today. I love that. But of course, heated seats are the best way to stay warm when the temperature's not very high. It uses less energy than heat in the ambient air. I've got two-stage heated seat and heated steering wheel is standard on the Soul, just like it was on the previous electric Soul. Yeah, I didn't even know that was there. You know I love a heated steering <laughs> wheel. It's there, it's there. Oh, for God's sake. I mean, in fairness, we've got it when I don't really need it, but I, I mean, I love a heated steering wheel. One thing I don't like, um, and I don't spend much time in the passenger seat, is you can't adjust the passenger seat up or down, and it's, it's all manual, whereas that's electric. Head-up display, HUD, uh, comes as standard with the launch car. Well, it's something that the Tesla Model 3 should have always had as standard. Talking of Model 3s, there's one there. Great car, this looks better, I think. And head-up display should have had it. Now, really, this is the total opposite of the Model 3 Tesla in terms of uh, cabin design because this is busy with switches. Kia and Hyundai like switches. Lots of buttons, but it's not confusing. It's busy, but it's not confusing. I can kind of decipher it and navigate my way around it really easily. I don't mind it at all. You can see you've got the paddles here for regen. And this has automatic regen, or you can, you can choose which level. I think there's three levels. I don't tend to tap the, the paddles. I just let it automatically decide. Uh, it does a pr pretty good job. And you can tell the regen by this, um, this graph on the right here, next to your digital speedo. And then on the left, you've got your state of charge. 70 miles an hour. I haven't got air conditioning on because I don't need it and I very rarely use it. I've got a heated seat. I have had the heated steering wheel on for a bit and I'll pop it on again. It started with 250 something miles. It's showing 243 now after 12 miles, 93 to go. Okay, I'm getting 3.1 miles per kilowatt hour, which is okay. I'd been getting on previous journeys at sort of 65, 70, but getting three and a half or more. And on short journeys, I get well over four and a half. If I stick it in sport, look at that. Oh yeah. If you want to know what the sole is like in sport mode, well, it's quick. Especially if you uh, start to press on in damp conditions, you're going to get a lot of tire scrabble because there's 204 PS here. That's the thing about the Soul. Some people have described it as looking like a Stormtrooper helmet or it might even be the robot from Futurama. I forget. And it does look a bit odd, but it can be really quite quick. I quite like that about it. It doesn't look like a car that should have performance, but yet it's got over 200 horsepower. You know, 0 to 62 in, in, in well under eight seconds. That's pretty quick, actually. I would desperately like somebody to crash one of these so that I can buy the battery pack of the motor. I know, I know that sounds dark, but what a combination. It's a really good combination. I think it, it handles really well, the Soul. Probably not quite as well as the, as the Golf, but it's, it's very good. Because of the fact that it's um, had to encompass that huge battery pack that sits low in the belly. The rear suspension is different to the piston cars. It's actually like a four link rear, um, independent rear suspension, rather than a cheaper, lesser torsion beam. I would tip the Golf into a corner a lot quicker than this. But, yeah. but you know, the thing is, is this is, this is intentionally sits higher, t taller body, 
it, it it's trying to it's giving you the SUV impression, even yeah. though it's not an SUV. It does, yeah. Which is if you like, if you're only buying an SUV for an elevated driving position, you can buy a non yeah. SUV. I mean, the thing I really like about electric cars is just the fact that they're nippy. Yeah, they're nippier than sort of petrol cars this is or quick. diesel cars. You can get in them. You can sort of, you know, I mean, our neighbour gets really annoyed because he claims. I wheel spin out of the drive a lot, which well, you, I don't. You, you I just, to. if I'm in the car, I just want to go. Do you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah. we are very different in that respect. Yeah, Johnny yeah, will yeah. get in, he'll sort of look around, he's sort of all like, well, right, I'm, I'm, I'm. Da, 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 let's, let's, you know, and then even getting out it takes you ages to get out of a car as well. I mean, I'm out of the car, I'm in the house, <laughs> and I probably unpacked a load of shopping while you're still getting out of the car. Normally, with a piston car, you want to start it up. Just let it fluid circulate for you know thirty seconds. Yeah, yeah. You basically start your car in gear because you're always late and you just want to go. An EV is perfect for that because you can get in it and nail it. And just go, yeah. So for me, an EV, I don't like hanging around. So you can just sort of get in and go. And it's yeah, the ba the range on it is just amazing. And you don't really get range like this unless you buy a Tesla. And Teslas are much more expensive. This is not a cheap car, thirty five thousand pounds ish. Tesla Model 3 is still 10 grand or more higher. So people can complain, but this is a near 300 mile EV with a seven year, 100,000 mile warranty. That's massive. And it's well put together and it looks good. I think it's seriously impressive. Some people who own the old soul, the old soul, um, think that this is just a, too much of a big jump financially um, from the old car because of its battery pack and they're not selling the Soul EV in any other battery size apart from the 64 kilowatt hour whereas the Kona can be had in the 39 kilowatt hour the smaller one which obviously costs less so if some people don't need a battery pack in a range that's this big so maybe they're missing that trick a little bit although for somebody like me who does the kind of journeys I do this 64 kilowatt hour battery pack is just a stunner. That's 64 kilowatt hours of usable power. The battery pack's actually bigger. It's just over 67 kilowatt hours. Um, so it's a heck of a thing. And that's really where, where your money's going. Now the biggest problem that Kia and Hyundai have had is supply. Nine months to a year waiting list for Konas, Souls, and the Neros. But Kia have promised that they're gonna ramp up production imminently. So they're hoping to bring that lead time right down. I think so far, there's been less than a thousand of these delivered in the UK. That's as of May, 2020. That some of the plastics in the car, and I know this is said before, they feel like they would mark really easily, especially in the boot. I know the boot is significantly smaller than its peers, the E-Nero, the Leaf, the Zoe, the Golf. It is a smaller boot. Uh, the Kona, it's similar to the Kona actually. Yeah, the boot could be a little bit bigger, but you know, you've got the advantage of the fact that you've got roof bars, uh, aluminium roof bars as standard, which is really good. The other thing it does, it wants to drive for me. Oh yeah. It really wants to drive for me. Like it wants to, it will pull the steering wheel. If oh, I, yeah. you know, it, it nudges you back in. It doesn't know what I'm doing. It's like, <laughs> I'm overtaking something. Don't nudge me back in or, you know, and it, yeah, I don't like that. So we, mm. I need, we need to turn that off. It's down here. Lane keep assist. I don't like that. Called. I mean, I don't like that on the chimney. I have to say, I don't like it. It's just. But also where we live on narrower back lanes, where which aren't, no... aren't defined markings and stuff. It, it's not seeing everything that we're seeing. No. Well, I that's more for motorway driving though, isn't it? I think so. And so you turn it on. Yeah. Turn it on when you're on a motorway, but I don't want it to drive for me at all. No, I tend to flick that stuff off. Oh, well. I'm just of the we... opinion okay. that if you pass your driving test and you're paying attention, you're in charge of the car. When somebody's like tapping you and pushing you and nudging you, it's like, I just find it massively irritating. Stop. Did you use the reversing camera? Never. No, it's really Never. it is really good on this. It's really clear. We, we're old school, aren't we? We just sort of. I just look behind me and check the. We look behind, buttons. you know. If we touch something, we touch something. It's not. It's <laughs> definitely not what we do. I don't do that. No. <laughs> I'm a very good driver. What do you think of the charging port in the nose? I mean, it's fine. Do you prefer it in the nose than in, on a side? Well, I mean that is built for driving, drive up, and you just. Part, I, don't you? I love the fact that it's got a light inside the door 
a really bright little white LED. So at night when the door opens, oh yeah, the golf was rubbish just, for the that. Golfers, you had to use you the torch. You couldn't see it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And of course, you don't have to pull up and go. Oh, hang on. I've pulled up the wrong way, it's on that side, and I've parked it that way. So at least with the front of the car, you, you just nose it. Mm. Forever. I reckon there is a bit more um, road noise than the Golf. Uh, I've got to compare it to the Golf because that's the last EV I lived with day in, day out. Um, but there's not a lot in it. And actually, considering the silhouette of this car, it's actually very good. In this launch car, you get the Harman Kardon premium audio system. And I can't demonstrate it for you because I'd have to pay the royalties to whoever, whoever's music I play. But take it from me, the system is an absolutely stunning audio setup. It's really good. Better than so many that I've heard before. And I want to try and explore that a bit more. But maybe it's because also it's, a, it, it, it's an EV. So you just appreciate the, the, the audio quality a bit more. You've got a subwoofer in the back on the right hand side of the boot which is built in, uh, and you can really hear that. It's an awesome sound system, love it. Okay, one thing I definitely am not keen on with the Soul is the fact that for the UK market, you can only order it with the SUV trim pack, and that's the sort of pretend front uh, and rear bumper scuff guards, the plastic cladding on the, so the lower sides to make it look more kind of masculine. I just don't like it. I think the shape looked better when it was pure. When I first saw it at the LA Motor Show, that block of colour, just think it suits the design better. So I think that's a bit of a shame. I also think it's a bit of a shame that you can't order it in that yellow colour that I first saw it in at LA. I think it looks mega. Although the blue is good, really good. I'm nearly at my destination. It's weird looking at my <clears throat> my range i've got 147 miles 150 miles uh left in the battery that's more really than my last ev had on a full charge it's just very very comforting there's the outgoing soul look right there tasteful color actually digging the color gosh i need the toilet <sighs> i've got the shivers 147 miles of range left and I'm not going to charge it, I'll drive it straight home. Give you an idea of uh, what this car can achieve with very little effort, frankly. The centre console, you've got this rotary gear selector on the new Soul, um, which you didn't get on the old one. The old one had a traditional automatic stick. I like the little rotary wheel, some people don't. Um, got lots of cubby holes down either side of here. I've got my sunglasses in there. You've got wireless charging port here. You've got a cigarette lighter there, two USBs, two cup holders, another little sliver here, electric handbrake, and then in there you've got a deep cubby that I've just filled with masks and stuff, snacks. I, li I like cubbies and things. I know you don't like me having cubbies and things because you just think I fill it with rubbish and it's crap. usually sweet wrappers and blown tissues blown tissues seriously wrappers, i mean that, that is, um, that's so skanky um so i like cubbies you don't like me having cubbies so this could be interesting <laughs> just seriously don't i don't have any how long have we been married um, did you just say <laughs> did you just say too, <laughs> too long 13 years in a month's time yeah that's right i knew that was just over a month yeah just under a month. <laughs> so really that's my summary. The, the Kia Soul EV is a really well judged car throughout. It's a practical size, it's interesting, it's such a fantastic EV package, but also it's got something about it and it's as good as it's going to get for a non-Tesla car that's cheaper than a Tesla in terms of range. Bang for your buck with the battery pack. Obviously, as time goes on, I'm going to do a couple of other updates of life with our soul. And uh, let me know in the comments, actually, if you've got one of these. Have you ordered one of these and are waiting for it? Or have you got a new 2020 soul? What do you think about it? Uh, which bits of it are your favourite? Thank you for watching Car Pervert. I've been Johnny Smith. If you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe. I welcome comments. Um, and if you would like to support me through Patreon, there is a Patreon link that I will put in here also and in the description. Thank you.